With one playoff round complete, the division finals are on tap. We'll get you up to speed on coaching and front office moves, plus highlights from every first round series. If you're a hockey fan, you gotta be in love with this time of the season. ECHL Week starts right now. Hi, welcome to another edition of ECHL Week. This time we come to you from the Bon Secours Wellness Arena in Greenville, South Carolina, home of the Swamp Rabbits. I'm Barry Schickling, and this is the 2022 Kelly Cup Playoffs on ECHL Week. Eight teams have already been eliminated from playoff contention. Eight teams remain. Let's kick today's show off by looking at previews for all four division final series. Considering the balance and strength of this season's 16 Kelly Cup playoff teams, it's not surprising that half of the first round series went to their seven game limit. Is there more seven game drama for the division final round? We'll find out starting tonight. In the Central Division, Brabham Cup champ Toledo was pushed to the brink by Cincinnati before coming away with a Game 7 victory. The Walleye will take on Wheeling for their next challenge. Although the Nailers finished third during the regular season, Wheeling fared well against the Walleye. If you need more evidence that the Nailers have potential to advance to the Western Conference Final, Wheeling knocked off defending Kelly Cup champ Fort Wayne to get to this stage. A good start should be key. Both teams are 3-0 and leading after two periods during this postseason. Although the leading regular season scorer for the Walleye, TJ Hensick, is also a top to team scoring list in the playoffs, don't forget Brandon Hawkins, who hit the net six times in seven first round contests versus the Cyclones. On Wheeling's side, no goalie made more saves during the divisional semifinal round than Louis-Philippe Guindon. As long as he has continued success in that department, don't be surprised if this is another lengthy series. Mountain Division regular season champ Utah had to get through a seven-game series to oust Tulsa in the first round and did so using a remarkable 16 first-year players. A couple of Grizzlies put up eye-popping numbers in that series. Benjamin Tardif is tied for the playoff lead with 13 points and ECHL Defenseman of the Year Charles Edward Dustu scored a league-best nine times. A balanced regular season battle between the two indicates this could be a lengthy series. That could help Rapid City, which had a five-day break between its elimination of Allen and the start of this matchup. Rush goaltender Lucas Parikh carries the fourth best goals against average into this series, but don't forget Utah goalie Trent Miner posted a league-high seven shutouts during the regular season. Forwards Gabriel Shabbat, Max Coda, and Steven Bayless all averaged over a point a game for Rapid City during the season series versus the Grizzlies. Playoff clashes between teams which finish 1-2 in their divisions during the regular season are often hotly contested. This one should be no exception. The South Division Final is the only one in which both teams advanced without having to go to a first round seventh game. Regular season division winner Florida had a challenge before eliminating Greenville four games to two. The Everblades Sunshine State opponent Jacksonville is in the division finals after its first ever playoff series victory, a four game sweep of Atlanta. The Icemen won't be snaking up on Florida. Jacksonville won seven of the ten games between the two this regular season. Goalie Francois Brassard earned the Vitusi Award as the top goaltender in the ECHL, so Jacksonville, one of two third-place teams in the division finals, is a legitimate threat. Florida didn't do lots of scoring in its first round victory, but its attack is balanced. Seven players scored more than a goal in the Greenville series. Blades goaltender Cam Johnson doesn't have the gaudy numbers of his opponent, but any goals against average under two is nothing to be scoffed at. And the only first round game in which he allowed as many as four goals was decided in a second overtime. Unlike the other three divisions, North finalists Reading and Newfoundland spent practically the entire season occupying the top two spots. The Growlers, on the strength of an outstanding road record, spent much of the first half of the season atop the division. The last few months, it was Reading's turn. There's little to separate these two. They're deep up front and on the blue line and both have quality goaltending. The Royals Pat Nagel spent much of the year in the American League when he wasn't a member of the U.S. Olympic team. Growlers goalie Keith Petruzzelli was a member of the ECHL's all-rookie team and he got into five AHL games as well. Newfoundland's Tyler Boland had an incredible first round series, racking up 13 points including eight goals in seven games. Reading has more of a defensive bent and is always looking to capitalize on opponents' errors. 
During the Royals' four wins over Maine in the first round, Redding gave up just five goals. It was Redding's first playoff series win since 2016. The Growlers have never lost a postseason matchup. Both of these teams are good enough to win the Kelly Cup. One of them will have its season end with this series. Hi, we're the Rabbits of Greenville Swamp Rabbits, and you are watching ECHL Week. Go Rabbits! Lots of news about coaches leads off our news from around the ECHL. South Carolina was impressed enough by the performance of interim head coach Brendan Kotick at the end of this past season that the team has removed the interim portion of his title. Kotick started his career behind the bench as an assistant for the Stingrays prior to the 2021 season. That year, last year, he helped the team reach the Kelly Cup Finals. This season, he replaced Ryan Blair on March 7th and piloted the Rays to a 10-8 record to complete the season. South Carolina didn't qualify for the playoffs. Having someone who has been here for two years that understands our goals and initiatives on and off the ice is very important to the success of the team, said Stingray's president, Rob Kincannon. We were very impressed with Brendan's work ethic, his attention to details, and his passion for winning. He has earned this opportunity, said Kotick. Two years ago, Rob and team owner Todd Halloran took a chance on me and today I'm named the head coach of the South Carolina Stingrays. I always worked hard as a player to get better and it has been no different as a coach. Kotick's playing stops in the ECHL included Toledo and Greenville. The Stingrays also announced that formerly interim assistant coach Ryan Bork will return to assist Kotick next season. The Orlando Solar Bears and former coach general manager Drake Barahowski have agreed to part ways. Team president Chris Heller said, We thank Drake immensely for his contributions and helping build a culture within our locker room that has made us a destination for ECHL free agents and for NHL clubs to develop their prospects. His commitment to this organization was always of the highest caliber. Barahowski was in his second stint as the team's head coach after starting in the position in November of 2016. He also had led the team during its first year, 2012-13. The team qualified for the Kelly Cup playoffs in three straight seasons from 2017 through 19. Orlando went 33-31-7 and this past year and did not reach the postseason. Said Burahowski, I'm especially appreciative of the support my family and I have received from the community. The fans here in Orlando are second to none in the ECHL. Orlando and new to the ECHL Savannah are the teams currently in need of head coaches. A couple of teams have changed executives. Allen has promoted Johnny Mydra to be its new president. In his previous role as vice president of ticketing, Mydra led the team to records in season and group ticket sales while finishing first in the ECHL for year-over-year -year revenue growth. I'm extremely pleased that we have an individual on our team who can step in seamlessly. Johnny is a leader among leaders. He has the skill set and enthusiasm to take the Allen Americans to the next level, said team owner Jack Galati. Meanwhile, about 750 miles to the northeast, the Iowa Heartlanders have announced that Tom Hamilton has been named team president. An Iowa City native, Hamilton spent 33 years working for a large Midwestern supermarket chain. Hamilton replaces Brian McKenna, a former ECHL commissioner. Said McKenna, the timing is right to transition to local leadership. Tom's knowledge of the community will allow him to lead the growth of the fan base and to broaden the ties of the team on a local and regional basis. Highlights from all the division semifinal series are next on ECHL Week. Thinking of selling your home? Now is the perfect time. Few homes are available for sale and this increases the competition. Many homes are selling above asking price. Buyers are offering seller favorable terms, few contingencies, closing dates that meet seller's needs, large down payments or all cash offers. Want to know what homes like yours are selling for? Contact Will Springer today. It's highlight time, and this time that means looking back at all the first round Kelly Cup playoff series. Four of the eight first round series went to seven games, and one of those, Wheeling versus Fort Wayne, went to overtime in the deciding match. 
The Nailers won three times in Indiana in this series, but the moment fans will long remember is the final game-winning goal, which brought the team its first playoff series success in six seasons. Matthew Kersia was the hero for the Nailers, and the Comets' bid for back-to-back championships was dashed. Matthew Kersia! Toledo will be Wheeling's opponent in the Central Division Final. It also took seven games for the Walleye to end Cincinnati's season. Toledo goalie Billy Christopoulos put up a wall early in the final match, and Brandon Hawkins chose an especially opportune time for his second career Kelly Cup playoff hat trick. A jam-packed Huntington Center relished the moment as the Walleye looked to at least duplicate their last Kelly Cup playoff go-round when they won the Eastern Conference Championship in 2019. It took regular season North champion Reading six games, not seven, to oust Maine, but it was a defensive battle in only one game where more than five goals scored. These teams faced one another a combined 16 times in the regular and post seasons, and amazingly, the home team won 15 of them. Jacob Pritchard notched the series winner for the Royals. Reading's next opponent is the Growlers, who had their hands full having to go to the seventh game to eliminate Trois-Rivières. Tyler Boland capped off a terrific first round with his seventh and eighth goals of the playoff season, and his second one in the deciding game was a beauty. Newfoundland's offense is humming, having scored four or more goals in five of the seven games versus the Lions. The series pitting Utah against Tulsa was unusual in that the teams alternated wins through the entire seven-game confrontation. And in the deciding game, the Grizzlies got three goals from two of their offensive stalwarts, Charles Edward Dastu and Trey Bradley, to help the Oilers conclude their campaign. Special teams made a huge difference in this series. Utah scored 12 times with the man advantage, Tulsa just twice. Rapid City's Game 5 series clinching victory at Allen ended in unusual fashion. The Rush scored three times in the final 2-11 of the game to get the Americans started on their summer vacation. One of Rapid City's keys in advancing to the Mountain Division final series is that in the first round, the Rush allowed just one power play goal. A first round league leading 11 third period goals for Rapid City in just five games also made a big difference. Florida's South Division semifinal victory over Greenville featured the only two overtime game of the first round. The Swamp Rabbits won that one. But the Everblades rebounded in Game 6 to advance to the division final. After spotting Greenville the first goal in the deciding encounter, the Blades filled the net four times in the final ten minutes of the game, and Joe Pendenza accounted for two of them. In the first round of this season's playoffs, no Eastern team had a larger shot advantage over its opponent than the Everblades. Finally, the only four-game sweep of the first round pushed Jacksonville into the division final. Despite a 5-0 blanking of Atlanta in that last game, this was a tough series. The other three games were decided by one goal, one of them in overtime. You might have heard a sigh of relief from Northeast Florida once this series was complete. After five years of play, it was the first playoff series triumph for the Iceman. That puts the wraps on another edition of ECHL Week from Greenville, South Carolina. Thanks very much for watching. Make sure to follow us on all of our social media channels. You know what they are. It's the best way to keep up to date on everything that's going on throughout the ECHL, especially during the Kelly Cup playoffs. We'll see you again in two weeks when we wrap up the division finals and look ahead to the conference championships. See you then. We conclude the show talking about success in the playoffs. It's all about being ready, and Greenville's Chase Seeky shows his fine stick preparation technique prior to a Game 5 victory in the team's series versus Florida. Keep in mind, there are many proper ways to take your twig.